Hey angels, welcome back. So today we actually have quite a different video from my normal perfume talks, but we're gonna kick off the video talking about what I am wearing today. So I did go through all of my like samples, I guess you could say like the decants, and I found that I had an entire collection of Just Box that I had not yet played with, worn, smelled. And so today I'm wearing Saint and Sailors by Just Box. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of like Montal, like Rose's Must. But let's hop right into what this video truly is about. So I had posted on Instagram talking about um, my weight loss journey and my fat loss journey. And um, as you guys know, just a little history, if you're brand new here, hi, how are you? Hit like and subscribe. I'd love to get to know you better. Head over to Instagram and connect with me there. I am Celia Cavalli. Um, but I used to be a personal trainer. It was my career that I loved and did for many, many years. I've worked in the supplement industry as well for many, many years, and I do have a lot to say about that, um, but that's a whole different video. This one, I really wanna stick with the basics and um, really help you guys out to understand and give you the data and facts on how you can get results. Um, so basically, that's my credential, so to say. Um, but my true credential is that I had a binge eating disorder. I was struggling so much with that when I came back to competing after I had all my health issues. I was dealing with severe autoimmune. You guys know my story. You can go back and watch that. This uh, channel is kind of like a progressive journey. I check in with you from time to time like this. And so you can just go back and watch all of those videos if you care to watch those. Um, and I can try and throw a few note cards up here too for you guys. So anyway. I had a binge eating issue um, and this really started to become an issue around the time that I was competing in 2021. So it started in about 2020. Um, I went from 110 to 114 pounds and ballooned up to almost 140 pounds. So quite a big weight gain. It was about 25 pounds altogether weight gain. And I felt... I just felt off. I didn't feel like myself. I felt bloated all the time. I felt sick all the time. I just did not feel like myself. And um, there's a whole psychological component to weight loss, fat loss that no one seems to talk about, um, but it's an important part of it. But in this video, I just want to give you like raw data, raw facts, and kind of talk a little bit about the psychology because um, that's an important part of it and being able to really wrap your head around why you do what you do is huge but being able to wrap your head around the actual facts is really big too because here's the deal there's a lot of people on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube who are giving like health advice and like weight loss advice and things like this that is actually really damaging and detrimental to the people who are taking in this information um, there's a lot of these like dietitians. I mean, they're actual dietitians, but they're they're giving all this advice that they don't even themselves follow. Um, and it's just there's a lot of confusion out there. A lot of people are unhappy. A lot of people are not seeing the results they want to see. And so that is why I am coming to you today to give you this video. You guys really, really liked my um, series I did on Instagram. So I did a full like not a full YouTube, but I did a full highlight series. Um, and if you want to catch up on that, just to kind of like cliff note this video, if you don't have the, um, if you don't want to sit through this video, <laughs> you can go to my Instagram right here. Um, you're going to see a little highlight that I need to change the a little highlight thingy, um, but it's the one that says nutrition. If you click there, you can see everything. So I talked a lot about how um, as a trainer, I would see people who would come into the gym, they would do their workout, and then they wouldn't get results. And a lot of times people tended to gain a lot of weight um, from coming to the gym. And you may be like, what is going on? What, what do you mean? Let me explain. And people would come into the gym they're starting new workout routines. You know, they look up a workout routine online and they start doing it. And then when they leave the gym, they want to reward themselves or they think, oh, you know, I went to the gym, so I'm going to go get something, you know, I'm going to go get pizza with a friend or I'm going to go get ice cream or I can eat an extra serving of pasta tonight. But here's what's really, truly happening. 
a couple weeks go by and their trainer or you know someone at the gym or their friends or some random person online tells them oh you're just gaining muscle when they talk about oh my gosh I've gained five pounds why did I gain five pounds you know I've been going to the gym every day I don't know why the heck I'm five pounds heavier and the person will say oh it's just muscle it's probably just muscle it's not muscle it's actually really really hard to gain muscle I'll explain what's going on for you guys so this is what's happening as they go to the gym they're exerting some effort but not enough to make actual like a real change and I know because I've been guilty of this in the past and I see it a lot um you see it a lot in the gym so like going into the gym and doing like the tread treadmill where you're hanging on or you're doing the stairmaster but you're leaning on it um or your you know, doing the bike, but you're doing the recumbent bike and you're doing it at a very low level and you're doing that and you think you're like getting a really good workout in. You might sweat, you might sweat a lot. Um, and then you look at the machine and the machine tells you, oh, you burn 300 calories or whatever it may be. But that machine's not tailored to you and your body weight and your, you know, metabolic system. So it could be that there could be a huge margin of error in that in and of itself. Like there could be a huge margin error within that. But the thing is, even if it is tailored, like I have a Garmin, which is tailored to me, I don't burn a whole lot of calories. I really, really don't. So when I did my walk yesterday on the treadmill, I was at an incline all the way up, 12.5% incline at a 3.5, 10 minutes in, I've only burned 68 calories. Um, people drastically over inflate how much they're burning versus what they're actually burning. So here's the deal. There's the overinflated caloric burn from cardio. There's the not pushing it to failure in your exercises, like when you're doing muscle building exercises. So say you're doing um, flies, you're not going till you're absolutely fatigued. That's where you trigger the response to build muscle. So if you're in the gym and you're using like really light weights and you feel that lactic acid build up and you feel like, oh, this is a pretty decent workout. Um, and it's great. I think it's amazing that people are in the gym, they're moving their bodies, they're doing things to better their life. However, understanding this is a real game changer if you want to see dramatic results. So if you're in the gym, if you push it to failure, if you push it to the point where you're super fatigued and you can't even lift, you know, you're wa lifting your water bottle is hard to do, you're going to see muscle growth. So that's important to realize. So like if you're fatiguing your body, you're letting it rest and recover, so you're giving yourself some time to recover in between, um, you're gonna start to see muscle growth. But muscle growth is expensive and it takes time and it's not something that happens overnight. Putting on even like six pounds of muscle on someone my size, I'm five foot two, is very, very hard to do. I've been trying to build my arm muscle for quite a while and I work out six to seven times a week and it is very, very difficult um, is someone who works out that much to put on muscle. Unless you're using like performance enhancing drugs, it is very hard, especially for women, to put on muscle. So just keep that in mind when you are working out, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna create a workout routine that, that tailors to what you're looking to achieve. So if you're looking to put on muscle, which I think that's a great thing and honestly, if you are looking for that tight toned body, you're gonna need to put on muscle. Um, muscle is what's gonna give you that look of that healthy toned appearance. Um, so don't be afraid to lift weights. Don't be afraid to lift heavy, um, as heavy as you can. So start as a progressive thing. You know, if you can only lift five pounds right now, start there and work your way up. Um, each time you go into the gym, work on a little bit better, track how much you're doing. That's a great way to really see how much progress you're making is by tracking your weights, how much weight you're able to lift. Um, and you'll start to see results too. So that's a really great thing. So track what you're doing in the gym. When you do cardio, give it an all out effort. So instead of just doing steady state where you're kind of like walking or I see people on the elliptical where they're watching TV and they're just bobbing along like this, really focus on what you're doing. So really take time to focus on what you're doing. So if you're doing a 30 minute workout, really get your head in the game and go all out in that 30 minutes. You know, whether it's a hit style class like Orange Theory or 
you're doing some sort of plyometrics or maybe you are doing some form of cardio where you're really, really giving it your all. Um, I know a lot of women are walking at an incline. It helps to kind of like build the booty a little bit. Um, you're walking in an incline at a, a speed where you can't be texting. You're not like doing all this other stuff. You're really focused on your workout. So that's important um, is being mindful of how you're working out. So really doing that mind muscle connection. And when you're doing cardio to really focus on doing the cardio and really give it your all in that cardio workout is going to be a game changer. Now, I use a Garmin Venue 2 and I'm going to update my Amazon store. I will leave the link down below and I will put the Garmin Venue 2 in there as well as other running supplies that I use. You guys know if you follow me on Instagram or if you've seen this YouTube for a while, I'm a runner. Um, started running in November of 2021 and absolutely love it. I do not do it for weight loss. Um, I do it for sport. So I want to see how fast I can get. I want to see, you know, I want to get faster and faster so I can see how I can PR better in a race. I want to eventually try to work up to being really, really good at this for my age range. Um, and that's what drives me. Like that's my goal in this. It's not a aesthetic thing. And I think that when we take the pressure off of aesthetics and we focus on health and we focus on performance, um, everything else falls into line. So it seems to always be that way. So when you take the pressure and the mindset off of, I just want to lose weight or I just want to lose fat and we focus on, I want to do this for performance or I want to do this for longevity. I want to be a healthy 60 year old. I want to be able to run with my kids. You're going to see results in time, but having that mindset shifts the desperation. So we're not as desperate to get the results. We're not doing desperate, crazy, stupid things. Like we're not doing fad diets. We're not doing uh, crazy workouts. We're really focusing on data driven, supported workouts and food and all of that. So I think it's really important to realize that this is not some quick fix type thinking. That thinking is very toxic in almost every area of life. This is a long game. This is health. This is wealth. This is um, focusing on you because you only get one body. Your body is your temple. You only get one body. So focusing on how you can move that body better, how you can perform better, how you can become the best version of you. And I promise the best version of you isn't a pant size. It's not any of that. Best version of you is performing at the highest level that you can perform at. So that being said, we're going to get into the nutrition part of this. So workouts, you really want to start tailoring your workouts. Just to recap all this, you want to start tailoring your workouts so that you're actually working out when you're working out. So when you're in the gym, you're actually doing things that are going to trigger more of a response. Um, your Garmin will tell you, because it is tailored to more of your BMR, like it's going to get a more accurate BMR. Um, and we'll go through that equation in the nutrition part. So I'll tell you how you can actually figure out what your BMR is and kind of figure out where you need to be caloric wise. Um, and calories are not everything. So before people like come at me, um, calories do dictate, they do dictate your weight. Um, but there's also nuances in there as well, which I will explain in the nutrition part. So there is like thermic effect of food and some other things that go into creating um, kind of like that furnace that burns through calories better. Um, there's hormones, there's all sorts of stuff. There's like ghrelin, leptin, there's like so many things that go into making your body as amazing as it is because your body is truly, absolutely incredible, amazing. Um, but it's not just as simple as calories in, calories out. It really isn't. I. It just isn't. I wish that... Um, you know, like I wish that it was super simple, but at the same time, I'm fascinated by how complex it is. So knowing that, know that a lot of this like calories in, calories out thing, it's not really, that's not the whole picture, right? That's not the whole picture. So it's also, you know, how you're moving your body, your workouts, all of that, your sleep, how are you sleeping? Sleep affects hormones, it affects everything. But getting into the nutrition, because we're not going to go off on all these tangents. You guys know how I can be. We're going to stick with like what we came here to talk about. Um, the nutrition is really the such a big, important part. So I know a lot of people who run. I'm in the running community, and I know people who run marathons. I know people who run ultra marathons. Um, and these people, you would think, oh my gosh, they're running you know, five miles a day. Sometimes they're running 30 miles a day. 
like you would think that they were all like stick thin, right? If, if, if cardio were what makes people lose weight, you would think that these people would all be really, really thin. Um, and that's not always the case. So the truth of the matter is what you eat has impact, a huge impact on your body, on your physique, how it looks, how it performs. So when you're eating a ton of junk food, which I hate to say, but the running community, there's so much junk food in the running community, like so much junk food in the running community. Um, I've seen people eat pop tarts, Twinkies, everything before they run, during their runs, things like that. I personally wouldn't put that stuff in my body. And I mean, I do every now and then I'll have something, you know, I guess, quote unquote, normal. Like yesterday I had fries with ranch at Chick-fil-A with my grilled chicken nuggets. I had eight grilled chicken nuggets and fries and some ranch. Um, but on an average day, I try and eat the most nutrient dense, incredible food for my body. I really want to adapt my body to having the best of the best of the best. So thinking in terms of that for athletic performance, putting a Twinkie in your body or putting Pop-Tarts in your body is not going to be quality fuel, right? So it's, it's not quality fuel. If you're in the bodybuilding world, it's, it still may fit your macros, but it's not quality. It's not quality food. And if you go back in my videos and you look at my face and you look at my body and like how inflamed I was, you can clearly see the inflammation from then to now, how I look now versus back then. My skin's better, my hair's better, my face looks different. Um, some of you have commented my eyes look whiter, like brighter, whiter. Um, my skin just looks better, like everything looks better. Um, and that is because I'm less inflamed. I'm not dealing with as much inflammation, which I was really struggling with early on in this YouTube journey. If you go back and you look at the very first videos on this channel, I was 26 years old. That was almost a decade ago. I'm 33 now. And you go back to back then and you'll see, I just look like a completely different person. I look healthier, happier. And that is because I've learned that, you know, eliminating greens personally for me was the best thing I could have done. Prolamins are so harsh on the body. Um, and if you want more information on that, look up like how to carnivore or Anthony Shafee is really amazing. He's here on YouTube. Um, there's a lot of people who talk about it. Dr. Peter Osborne. There's a lot of people who are doing the research on these things. Um, so it's not like super widespread information, but it's the information's out there and it's really good information. And I'll try and link some of their channels down below as well. So, um, nutrition wise, you have something called a basal metabolic rate. What this is, is how many calories you would burn doing absolutely nothing. So if you were to just sit back on your couch all day long, watching Netflix, this is how many calories it takes your body to stay alive. So for me personally, I'm five foot two. I'm very petite. Um, I am at 1,100 calories per day, roughly, for my BMR. Um, and this is actually very low. I know that there's people who they're around like 1,400 who are around the same, you know, stature as me. So the five foot twoers. Um, there's there's women who are like around. Um, 1,500, you know, it, it just depends on your body structure, hormones, and genetics. There's a lot of different components, right? So um, I'm at 1,100 per day. So knowing your basal metabolic rate, you kind of have this structure to work off of, right? So if you're going to the gym, you're working out, you can track how much you're actually doing through your, you know, gadgets, right? Your Garmin, Peloton. Um, Peloton's not going to be as accurate. You really need that heart rate monitor to help you to get a more accurate caloric burn because what the caloric burn goes off of is your age and heart rate. So that's really what, and weight. So age, weight, and heart, heart rate are going to be what dictates your caloric burn. So if you're on a treadmill at the gym, some random treadmill, and you don't have a heart rate strap on, honestly, it is what it is. I, I wouldn't even use the number on the screen at all. Throw that out. Um, you really need to have that heart rate uh, chest strap on. 
even the watch isn't that accurate. If you guys see me a lot of times when I'm running, I'll have like the actual heart rate strap on my chest. That's the most accurate form of measurement for your heart rate. Now there's different heart rate zones. We won't get into that, but anyways, the heart rate is going to dictate how many calories you're burning. So heart rate with age and weight equals your caloric burn. So that's how your gadgets track your expenditure, so to say, your energetic expenditure. So keeping that in mind, you can track how much you're burning, you can track your basal metabolic rate, and you can build a program off of that. So let's say that I started going to the gym because I want to talk about this. This is why people gain weight going to the gym. And I have this in my highlight. It will make sense um, when I explain it to you guys. So let's say, um, let's just use me as an example. So my basal metabolic rate is 1,100. Um, and I start going to the gym and I start working out. I'm working out three days a week, right? I'm like, wow, I am doing so good. I go into the gym and I burn maybe 200 calories every single time I go into the gym. So now I'm at like 1,000, it's gonna be more than that because I'm doing other stuff called NEAT. So it's like where you're doing other activities throughout the day, so it's gonna add up on your caloric burn. But let's just say I'm burning in total 1,400 calories a day, you know, on days that I'm going to the gym. And then on days I'm not going to the gym, maybe like 1,300, so to say. Anyways, I start going to the gym and I think, wow, I can start eating, you know, pizza and stuff because I'm going to the gym. So after I get done with the gym and I had clients who tell me this all the time, this was like the biggest thing I would hear is, oh, after this, I earned it. I'm going to go get a glass of wine and pizza with my girls. That glass of wine is upwards of 600 calories. I've seen, you know, with the pours that they do, usually typically like four ounces of red wine, I believe is like almost 400 calories, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's quite a bit. And so the pores are never four ounces. Four ounces is just a little bit of wine. So normally it's like eight ounces to 12 ounces of wine you're consuming. Right there, you could be consuming, let's just say you go out for wine and pizza after you um, work out. And I'm gonna put this in my fitness pal so I can get an accurate, I like accurate things. I like accurate data. Um, I don't like to give you guys data that's not accurate. So let's just say we go and we get our wines. We're doing red wine and we're going to do eight ounces of red wine is actually, um, let me pull that back up. So 600, and this is all pretty much sugar. So 656, um, calories. There's actually a little bit of protein in wine. That's kind of funny. <clears throat> so 2.7 grams of protein for eight ounces of wine. There you go, guys, get your protein. So anyways, we have that, and then we're gonna get the pizza. So let's say we're gonna do three slices of a gluten-free pizza that's 870 calories. So I'll show you guys right here, 870 calories. Typically, I could eat a whole gluten-free pizza, which I believe is like four slices, maybe it's more than that, but let's just use this as an example. So right there, in that one meal, and this doesn't account for any other meals. So let's simplify this and make this even easier. Um, let's just say that on average, when you leave the gym, let's say you burned 200 calories, 250 calories during your workout. We'll say 200 just to make it even. Um, and then you go out and you get a concrete mixer from Culver's as a reward for working out. That 200 calories you just ate or burned, that concrete mixer I believe was a thousand calories. So you right there you have an overabundance of 800 calories of pure sugar, which stores us fat super quick. Um, which we'll talk about thermic effect of food in just a second. But basically, that 800 calories that's quite a bit. A pound is 3,500 calories. So. Let's say you're doing that like three times a week. So let's say you're doing that three times a week. 800 times three is gonna be 2,400 calories. That's almost a pound a week. So let's say you're going to the gym, you think you're killing it, and then you you know, you know burn your 200 calories, you go, you get that concrete mixer three times a week, or you go and you get pizza with the girls, and you have that surplus of around over 1,000 calories. So let's see, what was that again? 
So let's say on the weekends you go and you get that um, red wine and pizza on top of what you're already doing. That's an extra 1,526. So let's say you do that once a week. You're well over a pound a week. So you're gonna be gaining a pound, pound and a half a week. Before you know it, you've gained (laughs) four pounds in a month and you go to your trainer or you go to someone at the gym and they say, oh, you know, you just gained muscle. You guys, this is not muscle. This is fat you're gaining. You're gaining body fat from eating a surplus of typically sugary junk style food after you work out. And I'm not saying everyone does this. I know I used to do this. um, And honestly, a lot of people do it. And it's fine if you don't have like certain goals you want to get to. But if you want the awareness around it, this is the awareness around it. So there's no right and wrong way to do anything. Um, There's just a mindfulness to be aware of when you're making decisions if you have goals you want to get to if you have a physique goal or if you have you know a health goal it's important to know the data so that you can make informed decisions and that's why i'm doing this video i'm not doing this video as like a weight loss video per se um this is more of like a an informational video so that you can make better decisions so that you can reach your goals whatever your goals are maybe your goal is to gain weight in that case do your workouts, but eat in a surplus. You're kind of get the, you're getting the gist, right? So anyways, protein. You really, really want, there's three macronutrients. There's protein, fat, and carbs. You really, really want to get in enough protein. It's just a stat that most Americans and most people worldwide actually just do not get enough protein. So um, I definitely am a huge advocate of tracking everything you're doing and everything when you're on a journey tracking so that you can get the data so you can make better decisions is key so tracking protein is really critical in order for you to well tracking food in general is really really critical in order to get the data to make better decisions so on average you want to be eating about a gram of protein per pound of body weight that you desire to be so let's say that you are someone like myself where i'm at like 115 right now 114 115 Um, but I may be prepping, may be prepping for a, another show. Um, not sure yet, you know, running really takes priority in my book, but if I'm able to get into a show and do a show, why not? Why not? I have these glittery swimsuits for a reason. So let's just say I need to be, um, 105 pounds for my stage weight because that's typically where I compete the best at. So going from one let's just round up to 115, I need to lose 10 pounds. So knowing that, I would need to get in about like roughly around 105 grams of protein a day in order to hit my goals. So um, when I'm setting up my, you know, my food plan, so to say, when I'm setting up like what, how I'm going to be eating, I'm going to want to be mindful when I'm tracking my you know, macros, tracking everything I'm eating inside of my fitness pal, I want to be mindful of how many grams of protein I'm getting and kind of create my my plan around that. So that's really kind of the, the main pillar. And then you can create how many carbs and how much fat you want to eat outside of that. So um, the way that protein digests, this is where the thermic effect of food comes in. The way that protein actually digests is that you're burning about 70%. This is kind of like there's no like actual and if there is someone cracks me in the comments below but there's no like hard science hard data on how many um calories for sure is being burnt in the protein process so if you're eating like 100 calories from protein that's actually being stored so you're burning up a lot of that it's pretty insane it's really interesting but the way that carbs and fat store are very different and how they're used in the body is very different than protein so keeping protein high but not too high because if you get too high and you're not getting enough fat you can fall into some issues with like hair skin and nails and other issues can go along with that too so you just want to be mindful of you know kind of creating a Um, structure to how you're eating to where you're getting a good balance where you feel energized you feel that energy you're feeling good but you're also getting what you need to help build hormones and all of that as well so I keep my fat really really high I'm on more of a ketogenic style way of eating everyone's going to be different whatever you want to do 
It's totally up to you. Um, the way that carbohydrates are utilized in the body is it does spike insulin and you are going to have insulin responses to carbs, whereas you won't have that with fat. Um, I wore a continuous blood glucose monitor and whenever I'd eat carbs, my blood glucose was up and down, up and down, up and down. My water weight would fluctuate. My body was out of whack. I would not have enough energy. I would continuously be continuously be going up and then crashing, going up and crashing. I needed things like coffee and energy drinks to get through the day. I no longer need that because my blood sugars are completely stable throughout the day. I may get a, a little bit of a bump after I work out because your body creates a little bit of that. But aside from that, I'm pretty stable throughout the day. So that being said, find what works best for you. And if you need data trackers such as, you know, continuous blood glucose monitors or you know fitness app trackers whatever you need to feel comfortable with the data so that you can optimize your body is really i think the smartest way to go about it's the wisest way to go about creating a plan that works for you so i'm a big proponent of blood tests i'm a big proponent of having all of this data when you can um i know that it's it's extremely expensive to do a lot of this but in my opinion, it's worth it if you've had severe health issues to go the preventative route where you can. I do a lot of data and tracking, and so I've utilized a lot of these different things. And really, the most eye opening was um, using like my Fitness Pal, which you can do the free version or you can get the paid version um, to track things a little bit more in depth. Um, using, you know, a con continuous blood glucose monitor was very eye-opening to see how my body was responding to carbs. Um, I do not respond to carbs well at all. So I eat a high fat, um, high protein diet and that's what's worked really well for me. Um, but you'll find what works really good for you as well. So knowing that fats do have a higher caloric rate per gram. So uh, protein and carbohydrates are four calories per gram. And then fats are actually going to be nine calories per gram. They're almost double what a carb or a protein is. So just keep that in mind when you're creating the plan. You may want to kind of factor that in. Um, I don't stress too much about how much fat I'm getting because for me, my hormones, everything like that, I know I need a very high fat diet. Um, you guys may see me on Instagram eating butter because coming from someone who was a binge eater, finding sati satiating foods is really important. Um, I have found that eating higher fat has been really, really, really beneficial to someone coming from a binge eating background is having that high fat, high protein diet has been a game changer because I feel satiated. I do not feel hungry. Um, I'm making sure to get in over a gallon of water a day. So I'm usually at about like a gallon and a half of water, which is really important. You need to stay hydrated for your body to function optimally, for your metabolism to run properly, for your skin, hair, nails, everything. And most importantly, for your brain to function properly. So if you want really good performance inside and outside of the gym and you want to enhance how you function at work, water is key. So I don't add anything crazy to my water. I just drink filtered water from the fridge and that's it. Um, I put some ice in it. Sometimes I like a little bit of a chilled water every now and then. I do not drink coffee. Um, that has been very huge in my performance was eliminating coffee for various reasons, but you know, do as you want to do. Um, but I will say caveat to that is that a lot of times people add high caloric or even just like a splash of you know, creamer here and there can really, really add up. So a splash of creamer could be 50 calories and then you're adding a couple of those per day plus a packet of sugar. Um, these things add up really, really quickly. Um, so it could add up to like an extra 300 calories a day that you're not accounting for. So I say if you are going down this route and you're really, really invested in learning more about your body, track every single thing that goes into your body, including your water. You want to know how much water you are truly getting in a day. Um, I know there's people who've said, oh, I drink over a gallon a day. And once they track it, they realize they're only drinking two cups of water a day and they're having coffee and pop and all sorts of other stuff, or some people call it soda, um, and all sorts of other drinks throughout the day, but they're really actually super dehydrated. So tracking is key. This is why I'm so, so, so in love with tracking everything in my life, tracking work things, tracking um, 
fitness stuff is because when you track, you see the data and from data, you can make better decisions. I've said that a million times, um, but it's true. And I really want to get that into everyone's head is that you can do better when you know more, you just have a better awareness of what it is you're doing and self-awareness leads to improvement. So, um, I hope that this helped. I think I covered pretty much everything. Um, so the equation for seeing results that you desire is being aware of where you are with basal metabolic. You can go get something called a DEXA scan, or you can find a place that has an in-body machine where you hang onto the rods and it calculates some nutrition stores have them. A lot of places have them for free. Um, some gyms have it for free. Sometimes it's a paid service, but it's not going to break the bank. Um, DEXA is a little bit more expensive. It measures body fat, skeletal, skeletal muscle mass, as well as like it can tell you your um, basal metabolic rate and other information. But if you want to get that information not at such a hefty price tag, I would say try and find an in-body machine at like a supplement store near you. Um, super helpful to figure out your data, where your body fat is and um, skeletal muscle mass is really important to know too and hydration, intracellular water, extracellular water. Um, these are all important things to track and be able to see so that you have the data to go off of. So with that being said, finding out that building a routine that's going to actually help you, you know, really crushing it in the gym, putting your all into your workouts and seeing that progressive overload over time. So seeing yourself build up with more weights or more repetitions and being able to really track that is going to be so helpful for you to get results. You're going to build muscle and muscle is going to tighten everything up. You're going to look uh, leaner, tighter, and you're also going to perform better as well. So whether you're a runner, whether you are a weightlifter, whether you just want to look great and feel your best and be able to, I don't know, play basketball really good, jump really high, whatever it is, you will have better athletic ability in all aspects of your life. Even if it's just carrying the groceries up the stairs because you live in an apartment building or something, I've been there. It all gets easier when you work out more. So being training smart. So here's, here's the top takeaways is training smart and being aware and tracking your training. That's like the key thing in all of this is track, 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 track. Um, but tracking your training and building a smart training plan where you're actually working. So my camera totally died. I'm back, but basically, um, I do not know where we left off, but I just want to say, I hope this is helpful for you. Um, so we had the tracking, you know, the workouts, creating a good workout routine. We have, you know, being really mindful and tracking everything you are consuming. There's so many apps for that. My fitness pal is just the easiest. It does have a free version, which is really helpful. Um, building a solid nutrition plan that's going to give you energy and fuel to get through your workouts and your work day and whatever it is that you're doing. Um, and then also getting quality rest and recovery. So I hope this video was super helpful. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, I'm curious to chit chat with you guys, leave them down below. Um, I hope that you find this useful. Again, this isn't to say that your weight is a huge part of your life um, because it's not. There's so much more that goes into life. But what this video is, is a basically a structure that you can take. It's, it's info you can take to create a structure in your life that works to help you with the goals that you have. So I hope that you guys have an amazing, incredible day whenever you're watching this. Please give me a thumbs up if this was helpful. Share this video with someone if this was helpful or if you know someone who needs to use this information. If you know someone who would find this helpful, um, share it with them. And don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell notification. And I'll see you guys in the next video.